On the Tell All Part 2, Chris Foster and Jamie Noguera nervously accused one another of lying and defrauding viewers of 90 Day Fiancé, the other way, the biggest letdown of the season was probably this couple. Although they weren't the first couple to split up, it was still heartbreaking to see them not exercise, a vocal subset of fans has been spreading the myth that Chris is a pill-seeking addict who lies about her injuries and ongoing agony since very early in season 4. Is that an ableist slander campaign or just another viewer theory? Chris is now responding in opposition. Chris Foster's spine has been severely damaged, notably in the area around her neck, as a result of her repeated auto accidents. She consequently experiences ongoing agony. And she never knows exactly when the agonizing pain will start or how long it will persist, anyone who has experience with such chronic illnesses is aware that most patients have both good days and bad days, in fact, some people will overdo it on good days in an erroneous attempt to make up for lost time. Undoubtedly, this could have the opposite effect and hasten the arrival of a worse day, people may find themselves perplexed as to how the individual who had just accomplished so much the week prior is now bedridden. But regrettably, that is how these ailments frequently affect people, certain followers came up with an explanation when they observed that she experienced pain on certain days but recovered on others. Or perhaps just keep them entertained longer, the idea? Chris was a pill popper who lied about having discomfort in order to obtain drugs. The hypothesis continued by asserting that Chris' illness in Colombia wasn't caused by her neck but rather by withdrawal. Just to be clear, this is not supported by any evidence. There were several Instagram commenters on Jamie's postings on Saturday, May 20, who questioned Chris about his addiction. Any comments on that, people can talk as much as they want, Chris retorted, I don't worry about what other people think. Chris remarked. She did, however, have some arguments in opposition, if you knew me, you would know I've had more than a dozen people put in jail for breaking into my home, all of whom are addicted, she said. Keep in mind that she resides in a very small, rural community, I've buried most of my drug-addicted school friends, and I was beaten as a child, Chris continued, but the kicker is this one. Chris revealed. I raised a child for a week and a year who was born dependent on cocaine and ill and trembling. Then, after a year, I had to return her to a father who was still an addict, Chris said. Worst sensations all around, Chris continued, sad that a sleep disorder and bad injuries, noting, mind you, I rolled my car three months before filming which re-injured my neck, she expressed sadness that this makes me a horrible person drug addict whatever, in the perspective of some people. Chris quipped, but I chuckle at this, if I'm this nasty person and all these people are sitting around talking about me, what does it say about their lives, Chris declared, I haven't spoken. Anything bad to anyone and I won't, she chooses to go in this way. Because they are mine and I like having my wonderful, happy people on them, there is no negativity in my little social media universe. Chris announced, she remarked, just don't have the time or the FKS to give. LOL sorry for the profanity, it was never good when people tried to fabricate ableist conspiracies rather than simply expressing their dislike for someone. But it seems particularly cruel in light of Chris' past.